three hours until the aerial bombing of Undisclosed. John jolted awake to find himself staring down a shotgun wielded by his greatest enemy, himself. He had fallen asleep in the caddy, his shotgun in his lap. He must have shifted position at some point. If he'd coughed, he'd have vaporized his own skull. The sun stared angrily through his windshield. John blinked and threw open the driver's side door, needing to get out and take a piss. He almost fell and broke his neck. The caddy was sitting six feet off the ground. Then he remembered. The night before, he'd parted company with the undisclosed zombie militia and made the nervous trek on foot from Dave's house up to the burrito stand, only to find the caddy was not in fact where they'd left it. At that point, his only possible hope of finding it again was if it had gotten towed away, back at a stage of the apocalypse when a car partially blocking the street was still considered a priority on somebody's list. John jogged twelve steps to the towing co- blocks to the towing company impound yard, expecting to be decapitated by a monster at any moment. The good news was that he wasn't. The further good news was that the caddy was in fact there, and that the tall fence had been cut open by some other looter or vandal days ago. The bad news was that the caddy was apparently the last seized vehicle before towing was shut down. It was still in the back of the tow truck. The truck was the flatbed type, where the whole bed tilted down to form a ramp and let the car roll on and off, a, techno- a technology that probably came about because the old hook style yanked off too many bumpers in the course of dragging cars out of handicapped parking spaces. John had jumped onto the truck's bed and opened the caddy's trunk, expecting to find that everything had been stolen. But apparently, even the looters who ransacked the impound yard took one glance at the rusting piece of shit and deduced that there would be nothing in the trunk worth the effort of prying it open. That was probably a good thing for both the citizens and law enforcement of Undisclosed. Inside, they'd have found the aforementioned shotgun, a custom-made triple-barrel sawed-off, 200 shells, Dave's blood-splattered chainsaw, the green mystery box taken from Dave's shed, a bag of Dave's clothes, a bottle of Grey Goose, a bad black velvet painting of Jesus, and a fucking flamethrower. The keys had still been in the tow truck. In fact, the driver's side door was standing open from when the driver had run screaming from whatever mob or unholy terror was coming his way. John spent 20 minutes trying to figure out the controls for tilting down the ramp and never could. It was either take the tow truck itself or walk. So, for the third time in 10 days, he commandeered a vehicle for use in a mission, promising himself he would return it when it was over. He was one for two so far. That is how John wound up spending the night tooling around town in the tow truck with the caddy piggybacking. One thing he had noticed when he was out, people, lots of people. Since Reaper had retreated and stopped enforcing the curfew, every street corner had grown clumps of people bristling with hunting rifles and shotguns and revolvers and machetes. John was comforted by that for about five seconds. Then he saw the looks in the eyes of these harried, tired, cold, frustrated people and realized they would butcher his ass if he even so much as let out a yawn that sounded too much like a moan. Just before dawn, John had passed the quarantine, which looked even more impregnable than it had with time on pause. Floodlights and armed drones were all powered up and standing guard. Driving slow to avoid the armed crowds that were wandering around the streets, John had made his way up to the asylum. A crowd was busy up there. Dozens of members of the militia were surrounding an RV parked in the yard. The pickup with the wood chipper was parked next to a long ditch that had been dug in the yard, and the chipper was running. John had edged closer, as close as he could without exiting the tow truck, which he was not fucking going to do, and saw bodies. The militia was dragging them out of a basement window and laying them in a row in the grass. Another crew was picking them up, one by one, and feeding them into the chipper. The chipper was, in turn, filling the ditch with red slush. Oh, holy mother of... John had heard a scream at that point, and saw a gang of militia approach from the street, dragging a cursing man covered in tattoos. He was thrashing around and lobbing insults at his captors, insisting on his innocence and his humanity. The captors conferred with Tight Pants Cowboy, who was in charge of the zombie disposal operation, apparently. The tattooed man's trial lasted 45 seconds, then Cowboy vaporized the man's forehead with two shotgun shells. Into the chipper he went. John John got the fuck out of there. He had headed as far outside of town as he could get without running into the Reaper barricades. So, John had parked the tow truck with the caddy piggybacking in a cornfield a mile or so from the water tower construction site. The Reaper barricade now standing between there and where he'd spoken a day for the last time. He had gotten drowsy, then climbed up to the caddy because he figured the higher vantage point would give him an advantage if he was ambushed while he slept. John sat upright and worked his stiff joints. 
He threw the shotgun into the passenger seat, where it clinked off the empty Grey Goose bottle. The gun was a custom-made job. He bought it at one of those gun shows he frequented. It wasn't pretty, but it worked. Firing all three barrels would chop down a small tree. He kept double aught buck loaded into the two side barrels and a slug in the middle. Give the target a nice variety of projectiles to think about. He needed to get into the quarantine. Not as a patient, either. He needed to get in there with the implements of destruction in the caddy's trunk. John pictured himself just plowing toward the fence in the tow truck, but remembered the concrete barricades meant to stop somebody from doing just that. Well, sitting here was accomplishing nothing. John jumped down, pissed for several minutes, then threw himself into the tow truck.